So we're continuing our discussion of linear algebra. Again, because we're going to use this extensively in the class to solve for principal stresses, to do um, matrix, matrix multiplication, other things like that. Um, one of the most used, I guess, useful parts of linear algebra is in solving linear systems of equations. And so uh, if we have a system of equations that we'd write in matrix form like, like this, um, we have a matrix. This would be A. This is a vector x. This is a vector b. Uh, we consider that we know all the components of A and we know all the components of b, and we're seeking the solution to x. right? So this is no different than if we just wrote down a system of equations. So in other words, if we did our matrix vector multiplication on the left side, remember we talked about last time, so we'd have an equation A11, X1 plus um, A12, X2 plus A13, X3 is equal to B1, A21, x1, a22, x2, a23, x3 is equal to b2, and likewise for the last equation. Right? So <clears throat> when we solve matrices, uh, solve systems of equations in this form, uh, in the actual matrix form, we can work through some things we call matrix row operations to do it for us. And to, to solve these system of equations. And they really just break down into kind of three rules. And the reason that it's nice to have these three simple rules is because <coughs> we can implement those three simple rules into a computer easily. And in fact, whenever you have any uh, direct solver that solves a linear system of equations in a computer, um, they just implement essentially these three rules. And so the first one is that swapping rows doesn't change the solution. And that should be obvious because, and that's part of the reason I wrote out the first two equations, right? If this is just sort of a convenient way to write that, and we were going to work out the solution to that linear system of equations by hand, of course it doesn't matter if I simply write the second equation on top of the first one which is essentially all I'm saying when I say that swapping rows of the matrix uh, in solution vector don't matter. Right? Because it wouldn't matter if I just simply wrote one of those equations before the other one. Uh, adding rows together doesn't change the solution. So we often do this, like if you, you know, th these are things you've been doing since algebra two, maybe at least, right? Or maybe I guess algebra, you know, since high school, right? When you go to solve a system of equations, often you can just add the two equations together because that will conveniently, <coughs> conveniently eliminate one of the terms, right? And so we do this all the time. Um, multiplying a row by a scalar doesn't change the solution. Right? We all know this. If you have an equation and you multiply both sides of the equation by a number, it's still the same equation. It doesn't change the solution. So we can solve linear systems of equations using some combination of these three rules. And again, the reason it's nice to break it down is because this is the three rules we essentially implement into a computer in a logical way, and we let the computer solve it for us. However, it's useful to do this at least once or twice by hand because it gives us a convenient sort of set of tools for solving for something called eigenvectors, which we'll learn about soon. <coughs> uh, the next topic, actually. So let's look at an example. So this is our system of equations written like this. And what we want to do is solve for x1, x2, and x3 using these three rules. Right? We call these row operations. So 
I'm going to write the system of equations like this. So there's our A matrix. And I'm just going to put a dashed line here. And then I'm going to write the solution vector there. So 6 minus 6, 3. Right. So again, uh, that's our system of equations. And I've just rewritten it like that. OK? Now, what my, what my goal is is to perform those row operations one by one, and it doesn't matter what order we do them, but I want to perform those row operations such that the left-hand side, the side on the left of that dashed line I wrote, drew, becomes the identity matrix. So I just want a 1, 1, 1 over there on the left-hand side. Okay? So the first thing, and, and you know, as you practice this, you can, while it doesn't matter what order you do them in, a clever choice of the order can reduce the amount of work you have to do, right? So automatically, just looking at that, I can see that if I swap the third row and the first, then I have a one on the diagonal of the first row, right? And so this is going to be a little slow, I mean, especially for, for those of you that have seen this, but I just want to be very explicit. And I'm not going to make you do this a thousand times in this class, but let's look at it slowly one time, right? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to swap row one with row three and write out the results. So one, zero, two. Uh, we'll leave the next row alone. Zero, zero, three, minus six. Two, three, minus two, three. OK? Now, I'm going to multiply the second row by a constant, right? by a number. Uh, and I'm, that, I'm going to choose that number carefully so that I can turn that 3 in, in, in you know, 0, 0, 3. I want to turn that 3 into a 1. Right? So what would I multiply by a third? Right? So I'm going to multiply 1 third times row 2, leaving everything else alone. And of course, as you get better at this, you can sort of do multiple operations at once. I'm not doing that here. Again, I'm going very slowly, right? so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I just, you know, I, again, I could have said I divide by three, right? But I, I want to, you know, dividing by three is the same as our rule was multiply by a number, right? So I want to multiply by a third. That keeps our rule simple, right? Okay. Now, if I swap the second and third row, then I have a one where I need it to be, right? So swap row 2 and 3, leaving everything else alone. Okay, so now, now I, I will use kind of two rules in once. What I want to do is I want to I want to eliminate that two in the second row, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first row by minus two, right? and then add it to the second row. Multiply the first row by minus two, add it to the second row. So I'm going to say minus 2 times row 1 plus row 2. And that's going to give me right. 
Everybody see what I did there? Mm -hmm. So minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, plus 2 is 0. Then I have minus 2 times 0 plus 3 is 3. Right. Minus 2 times 2 is minus 4, plus minus 2 is minus 6. Right. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, plus 6 is 0. So that's how I went from, from there to there. Okay. Now, if I divide this row by 3, or multiply by a third again, I'll have a 1 right there. So, 1 third row 2, 1, 0, there. So this is almost always what I do is when I do these, uh, I try to make the, this left, you know, the thing left of the diagonal line that I stopped drawing, the horizontal, the vertical line that I stopped drawing there. Um, everything to the left of this, I want to make this guy upper triangular, right? So that it has zeros down below, ones on the diagonal, and then it becomes real easy to eliminate above it. And by the way, I mean, we're, we're working on a 3 by 3, but this works for a 1,000 by 1,000 matrix. This is exactly what a computer does to solve big matrices. Right? So then, uh, yeah, so then I can just eliminate above. So 2 times row 3 plus row 2. 2 times row 3 plus row 2. Uh, yeah. No, no. Two. two. Two times this row would give me a two there, and then I'm going to add it to that. Two plus minus two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, so, so here I have uh, two times two is minus four plus zero minus four. And then, now on this last one, minus 2 times row 3 plus row 1. So now, minus 2 times row 3 plus row 1 gives me 1, 0, 0, 7. So what's left on the right-hand side there is the solution. So my solution vector is x is equal to 7 minus 4 minus 2. So in other words, x1 is equal to 7, x2 is equal to minus 4, x3 is equal to minus A is equal to 2, 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2. B is equal to 6, minus 6, 3, enter and solve. Seven minus four minus two. Seven minus four minus two. 
Any of y'all ever use Mathematica? You ever use Wolfram Alpha? Right. So Mathematica is the engine, the compute engine behind Wolfram Alpha. So Math Wolfram Alpha came out in like 2009 or something. But Mathematica has been developed since 1984. It was originally written by uh, Stephen Wolfram, who might, quite, might possibly be the smartest man alive, literally. He's, he's still alive. He wrote, I think he wrote his first scientific paper when he was 14, and he got his PhD from Caltech when he was 21. So anyway, um, Mathematica. I'll use it a lot for quick checks and calculations in the class. 